Well, hello, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. Jujitsu 2000 here today. I'm back. I hope you're doing fantastic out there. In this video today, we have an offering from Watt Cycle. This is their 100 amp lithium iron phosphate battery. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what's included in this package. The first thing that we see here is the user manual for this battery. Right now we're going to be looking at a 12 volt 100 amp battery from Watt Cycle. And then down here at the bottom you can see there's some contact information in the event that you want to get in touch with them. So here on the first page you can see that there is some caution information. Feel free to hit your pause button if you want to read any of this a little bit longer. I'm generally going to run through this fairly quickly. Here is some contents of the user manual. And then right here we have a product overview page. Talks about some of the details and features of this battery. The next page, it does have a really nice charge and discharge curve so very nice there is a connection diagram of how you would wire in a basic system and then right here on this page this talks about the BMS and the unit that we're going to be looking at is in this column so all the specifications for this particular battery are in this column here as you can see this user manual has lots of information in it now we have some battery parameters very nice and then over here we have some charging tips and information on charging the battery you do have to have a dedicated lithium iron phosphate charger to charge these types of batteries and this is the approximate time that it would take to charge this battery using a 20 amp charger that's what I have so about five hours now I've already pre-charged this battery partially off camera before filming so that that step won't take as long installation environment preparation information inspection information and as you can see like I said this user manual is packed full of good information there's a cable sizing chart there that gives you information on what size of wire you need to run very cool and then on this page it tells you about different ways of wiring these batteries if you have multiple batteries so in this diagram you can see that they have them wired in parallel and then in this diagram you can see them in a series and then down below you see series and parallel so that's pretty nice that it has the ability to be wired that way here is some more information here on this page and we're almost through so bear with me folks working through this as quickly as possible I just like showing these user manuals because there might be somebody out there that needs this valuable information there's a wide list of applications that you could use a battery like this for and right there off-grid life that would be my per personal application and then of course what should I do if the battery has a zero voltage sounds like it might be BMS -ed. and when that happens from my experience with other lithium phosphate batteries is if they go into BMS you need to introduce voltage through a charger to wake them up there's some warranty information
some after sales service information, how to store your battery, all kinds of good information here. There's a packing list of the items that's going to be included in this box. So you get the battery, you get the screws, you get the specifications which we're reading right now and then two plastic insulation caps. And it says that there's going to be four screws so that's kind of cool. It's always nice to have those M8 screws. Thank you. And that's all there is to it for this user manual for watt cycle. So as we continue to unbox you can see that there is this little package here that has screws. And very nice, they include four screws for the terminals on the battery. Very nice. It would be nice if they had the Phillips on them. Something like that would have been really nice. You can use a drill to put them on and off. But still, it's nice that they include four screws. The next thing that we see is some foam. So we'll just go ahead and pull the foam. And you can see the battery there. It has a nice nylon strap. We'll pull this thing straight up out of the box. And as you can see, it's protected very well for shipping. And there's a first look at that battery. Very nice because they have these little plastic insulators. So the battery won't accidentally short circuit itself in shipment. So we can take those off. You can discard these if you want to. Uh, one thing that I really like here that I'm seeing is these are brass. These terminals are brass. So very nice. So on the front you can see 1280 watt hours of capacity. It is a 12 volt 100 amp battery. And you can see the email, the website, and then some information. Here's a look at the side of the battery. It's got all the specifications that are real important to know. Everything is labeled very well. You have the negative and the positive terminals. Let's go ahead and pull out a couple of these screws. So we've got our positive there and our negative. Now the current retail price at the time of me filming this video for this battery on Amazon is about $219. Now it does say on the website that this battery will handle 20,000 cycles, but I believe that's possibly a misprint. I'm thinking they're meaning 2,000 cycles. And like we saw in the user manual, this battery does support four different batteries in series or in parallel, or you can do the 4P4S that it showed in the user manual and that's really cool because you get a tremendous amount of storage you get 20.48 kilowatt hours when you have those batteries wired in that configuration now for a small battery like this you might be wondering how long can you run a device well let's start by looking at a load that's maybe around 50 watts. You could run a battery like this with a 50 watt load for about 23 and a half hours. So that's pretty good. Now if you got a 100 watt load, like maybe a TV or something like that, uh, you could probably get almost 13 hours of runtime out of this battery. If you're pulling 500 watts, like maybe you're running a refrigerator or something like that, maybe about two and a half hours of runtime. And then if you got maybe an 800 watt draw, say you have a small microwave or something that you're trying to run, you could run that for about an hour and a half, a little more than that. Or if we bump it up to a thousand watt draw, maybe it's a coffee maker or a heater or something like that, this battery would run that load for about 1.2 hours. So it's got a good amount of capacity given the small size that this battery is. It's not a heavy battery. It only weighs 23 pounds. So that's fantastic. The dimensions of this battery, if we go here, it's 6.6 .6 inches deep, it's 8.2 inches tall, and it's 10.2 inches wide. So it's a good, good size battery. Now, if we want to look at those dimensions in centimeters, it's 17 centimeters deep, 21 centimeters tall, 
and 26 centimeters wide. The cool thing about this battery versus a lead acid battery, and I'll give you some comparisons here, is this one has a lifespan of probably around 10 years where your lead acid battery doesn't have as many cycles so you could only get probably three years out of a lead acid battery and while I'm speaking about cycles of the battery how many times you can recharge this again they say 20,000 I think they're meaning 2,000 2,000 cycles where a lead acid battery you're getting about 500 cycles now this battery does have a built-in 100 amp battery management system where your lead acid batteries don't have a BMS, a battery management system. Now part of that BMS is you get low temperature protection on this battery where a lead acid battery doesn't get low temperature protection. Batteries like this are environmentally friendly. If you're looking at lead acid batteries, they pollute the environment and they also off gas. So if you're gonna be living off the grid or putting this in an RV, you don't have to worry about off gassing with these types of batteries. It's very, very nice. Now again, the weight, 23 pounds versus a lead acid battery of the same type capacity, you know, you're looking at 32 pounds or more for a lead acid battery. So these are a lot lighter and they're smaller. They take a smaller footprint and they last a lot longer and they have more power. And not to mention if you're using a lead acid battery and you only draw that thing down about halfway, because if you go down too far, you could start damaging the plates and things like that on lead acid batteries. So I guess what I'm saying is you could only get about 50 amps of of capacity out of a 100 amp battery because you don't want to go more than halfway down. You don't have to worry about that with these types of batteries. You will get more charge cycles if you don't reduce it all the way to zero and then build it back up. But if you do that, it's not going to hurt the battery. That's what I'm trying to say. Now the uh, temperature range for this battery is minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 158 degrees Fahrenheit. That would be your discharging uh, temperature range so that would be minus 20 degrees centigrade all the way up to 70 degrees centigrade now this battery does have grade A plus cells inside so the BMS does overcharge protection over discharge protection over current protection and short circuit protection so to charge a battery like this you do have to have a lithium phosphate battery charger I have one here I'm just gonna plug in the negative then I'll come over here plug in the positive you'll hear a fan kick on and basically I will let this battery charge until I have a green indicator telling me that charging is complete so again as that chart was if this battery was fully discharged it would take about five hours to do that okay let's go ahead and hook this battery up to a power inverter I'm gonna use this little 1500 watt alpha power inverter so we'll start with the negative terminal here. We'll just thread that on. Now, before I plug in this positive, I always like to tap the positive terminal. Sometimes you'll see that little spark. You should only see it once. Uh, and the reason you would see that spark is you would be loading the capacitors in the power inverter. Now, I don't know if we'll see that or not because sometimes you don't, but let's go ahead and tap it. There's that little spark, now it's done. So from here, we can go ahead and just make that connection. Making sure everything's nice and tight. Now we can turn on this inverter and plug in some devices and see how, how they work. There's our power. It does give us the voltage of the battery currently, 13.4. I didn't fully charge it. Uh, we can see that we're creating 113 volts alternating current and it did settle down it's gonna settle down about 110 I'm guessing so we're ready to plug things in so the first appliance that I want to plug in this is a little hot plate for cooking I'm gonna go ahead and kick this on to max you see the little light comes on and we're starting to draw down uh, some power and this hot plate's gonna start to heat up we're going to heat up some water and just test out this battery. I have a little stainless steel pot there. Let's just pour some water in there and see how this battery performs. 
using this little hot plate with the lid on. We'll just set that on and see what, what happens here. And as you can see, we are at a very light boil, nothing too heavy, but the battery is performing very well on this test. Let's try another test. One of my favorite things to use portable power for is things like pressure cookers like you see here. This is a six quart instant pot. It draws around a thousand watts. So let's go ahead and push the button. Pressure cook. And as you can see, the battery is currently working just fine running this pressure cooker. This is nice because if you want to take a battery like this camping or use it in an RV or something like that, you can absolutely cook things like a pot of beans or roast or whatever you want out in the field without the need to carry a bunch of other equipment. So it's very nice to have that battery that will do something like that. Now there's several ways that you can charge this battery uh, like this. The first way is what we showed earlier and that is that little lithium iron phosphate battery charger. You can also charge these on your vehicle and you can use a solar panel with a charge controller as well to charge these types of batteries. So they have a lot of applications that they can be used for very effectively. And one of my favorite applications for using a battery like this is doing what I'm doing right now, filming YouTube videos. It works very well. So I'm pretty impressed. Right now we are pressurizing the pressure cooker as well as running the hot plate. The wires back here are warm to the touch but not hot. There's a lot of electricity flowing through those wires. You want to make sure that these connections are nice and tight to prevent any kind of sparking or arcing or anything like that. Um, but this uh, power inverter might not handle both of these. It's only a 1500 watt power inverter but that takes nothing away from the battery or its capacity to do what it does but I'm impressed with how this battery is performing it's working very well and as soon as I stopped the camera uh, the pressure cooker came up to pressure so very nice the hot plate is starting to get red hot this battery is really doing well I'm impressed so let's go ahead and turn the hot plate off we will cancel our pressure cooking and wrap up this video. I want to say thank you to Watt Cycle for sending this battery out for review. My final thoughts are very, very simple. This battery is performing extremely well. In fact, it's doing more than I thought it would do. I like the battery. It's working good. As you can see, the voltage climbed back up once I turned the two loads off. It's a nice battery. If you guys are interested in this battery, I'll put a link in the description box down below. The price point and form factor of this battery are both outstanding. Again, you can pick this up for $219. And at the time of me filming this video, they have a sell right now for $200, I think, for this battery. I'll put a link down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to leave comments down below, like this video, share this video, and until next time folks, have a beautiful day. We'll see you on the next one. Bye for now everybody.